All right, in this segment, I want to cover the jumper jet. That's what I call it, or you want to call it the remote satellite reel. We're going to beat this storm. we got a hurricane that's come in up through the Gulf of Mexico and headed west. All right, we're going to hook this up. Chris will show this. Do you want to run it in the little pipe? Probably a little pipe, eh? Yeah, I'll uh, run it in the little pipe. Okay, so let's say we're inside uh, doing a floor drain. Now note, he heard that click, so it won't pop off. Listen for the click. Bingo. Okay, so he's going to hook his hose. Let's follow him back here. We're going to hook, I'm going to bring this other hose in while he's doing that. we got two guys, we can work. Going to keep that out of the way so we don't got a trip fall. Now this is the power wash hose or the jump jet hose. We'll show the power wash as well. Okay, we're going to grab a, a nozzle. Any nozzle is fine or pipe cleaner, whatever you want to put on. Yeah, that looks good. So we got the quarter inch nozzle. I'm going to grab the remote. I'm going to turn the remote switch on. Now with this unit, I don't recommend running any heat because the poly hose, it says it'll handle 160 degrees, but poly hose isn't what they always label it to be, right? I just, you know, you can maybe run it warm. Okay, so he's got the foot pedal operation. He's gonna hand feed that. Some guys don't even put this hose on a reel. All the connections are tight. Now Steve, let's come over here. I'm going to move this reel out of the way. Off, off, easy start valve right there. Press it once. Hear the click. <coughs> Excuse me. Second time, we'll fire right up. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open the, the, the hose that feeds that. But we're not quite done yet. Steve, come on in. That's on for this secondary reel. Now this will activate it. That's easy start. The water's flowing back to the tank. Boom, you're live. Now that's live. Back to this hose back here. Now when I'm running this, I'm only running it basically on idle, about 2,000 RPM. That's all you need for this hose. Now when he pushes down on that, it fires up. Might have... Wouldn't let off. Okay. Now, after you've done jetting, let's say you're doing a floor floor drain inside of a property. I'll try to keep my voice here. Um, let's say you're done with this, and you shut it off. Okay. Keep in mind you're still under pressure. This is important. It's one of our safety training. Listen to this. Okay, now if he'd pushed his nozzle, now he's going to relieve any extra pressure by pushing down on that. Now if you have any problems with this hose or uncomfortable, don't use it. Just saying it flat out. Buy a little electric jetter from us with a hose bib and you can do your inside drains. A lot of guys really love this once you get used to it. Again, if you're, if you're unfamiliar or uncomfortable with this type of application, don't use it. Make sure again, if you're cleaning too big of a line, now that's a small small hose diameter, but you don't want to have that hose go up in a clean out if they've installed it wrong and have it come back at you, right? Okay. Let's go ahead and we'll 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 show that. Let's go ahead and unhook that. Let's hook up the, the wand wash to it. <clears throat> so we're gonna show how to run this as a power washer next. A lot of jobs. Um, they'll want a job cleaned after the job. Now we've got a variety of nozzles that we include with these units. I don't necessarily recommend this red nozzle because that's a zero degree. 
okay? Don't take nozzles from your home power washer and put them on this unit, okay? It's, it'll create too much pressure. I like yellow as a general wash nozzle. And kind of take a look at that. Make sure that's coupled in tight because that'll blow that nozzle off. So we'll hook that to the uh, power wash hose, we call it. That's the other hose. Don't run a gun off this ho hose. It's too long, creates a lot of back pressure when you let go of the gun. So we'll go ahead and run it like that. Again, I've got re my remote control. And we're going to show how the heat works as well. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start it in the safety start position. Hose reel off. Hose reel off, easy start valve on, okay? Push once. You know it's armed when you when you, the flash your lights on, okay? Press it again, we're gonna start. I'm gonna give it a little bit of juice. And that's that gives it enough power that when you pull the valve and activate the hose reels that you don't have back pressure, okay? Now you're live to these hose drills. Chris, you ready? Now he's gonna start it with the gun pulled. Okay, to run heat, you just push the burner on. Now look back at the machine. You can hear the you can hear it running. That's burning so clean, you can't even see the fumes. Now listen when I turn it off. Make sure you turn it off to cool it down, whether you're jetting or washing. Again, on. Off. Let's say you got a 911. Keep this on your on your pant leg. Boom. And just hold it down. Let's start it again. One click. We'll let it cool down just a little bit. Off. Okay, let's show how to antifreeze this and put it to bed. Okay. So we're gonna disconnect the, the gun. I'm gonna make sure any back pressure is relieved back into the tank which there isn't any because he pulled the trigger. Okay, that let go of the, the back pressure, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and antifreeze this unit. I'm gonna turn this valve on, this valve on. We'll, we'll do the, the jet hose because you can use that the most. This valve off. So when we start, that's live. So the first thing, go ahead and pull that, well, you really, you can pull it out a little bit. You can take that stinger off. Make sure you put your tools where you can get back at them, okay? Put that inside there. All right, I'm gonna hang on to this remote. Okay, this is important, <clears throat> okay? We've been running water. Follow your arrows, okay? Now we're running antifreeze, okay? That'll antifreeze the whole system. So we're gonna go ahead and antifreeze this anyway. Um, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna Turn it on. We're going to wait until the antifreeze clears out, until he'll see some antifreeze. Let's go ahead and we're all, we're going to go live because there's no nozzle on there. We know there's no back pressure. Okay, press once. Arms the system. You'll see the RPM gauge clear itself. That's the computer. Oh, pushed, pushed it a little too hard. But. So that's running antifreeze right now. We do. We are antifreezing this. In actuality, we're going to wait until we see antifreeze, and then I'm going to hit the, the the bypass valve, drain the tank, water tank, and every component's antifreeze. The heating coil, everything. Come on over here, Steve. You'll see as soon as that gets a little foam, you can put a little Dawn in with your antifreeze. We're, we recommend uh, windshield wash. This color will change right here. See? Okay. Then you hit the bypass valve. Okay. That's running antifreeze back into the tank. I'm going to turn it off. And that unit's antifreezed. Okay. 
we do the same thing on the on the washer hose okay we're gonna go ahead and turn it on let's go check our antifreeze level keep 50 bucks worth of antifreeze with you it's absolutely worth it we already know we're antifreezed up in the here up into the coil and back to the easy start valve so it'll have to run for maybe 30 seconds okay so we're off here on with this hose drill and we're on with the flow coming up and over here because it won't flow anymore here it's going to flow this direction path of least resistance okay one click wait till it clears go ahead and start now this will only take a second now it's really important that we hit this valve Shut them both off. Shut them both off for about 10 seconds. That shoots antifreeze out of the relief valve up through that side hose. So your unloader valve is also antifreeze. Now make sure you secure your hoses. Make sure you secure your nozzles. And make sure everything's put back away. Do a walk around on the job. Get your check or <laughs> wherever you work for. And before you head out, do a second walk around. Make sure you haven't stuck something on board that can fall off, okay? All right, any questions, call? I think that's pretty thorough. One thing's for sure, let me show you back on this water supply. Then go back, when you re-antifreeze, re capture that antifreeze back into that tank or have a separate couple buckets, but that's how you catch your antifreeze. Always check your antifreeze because it gets weaker and weaker as the season goes along. So I have an antifreeze checker. You don't want to freeze out a coil or a pump. Okay? Take care. Thanks.